Okay, uh, so how do we solve the following um, linear ordinary differential equation? What we have is y double prime plus x y prime plus y equals zero. And we'll call that equation one. Now, <clears throat> uh, we have to work out, first of all, in order to solve this equation, we're going to use the Ronskian method uh, of solution. Right, okay. Now, the Ronskian can take two forms. Uh, one is a determinant, kind of a matrix um, for which you calculate the determinant. And the first method that we're actually going to use uh, to work out or guess initially a solution to equation one is <coughs> uh, the Ronskian um, expression of the form W equals, uh, we'll just call this C E to the minus uh, interval of P uh, D X. Now, <clears throat> I'll just make this P look a little bit more convincing. Uh, so, uh, there we are. P is a function of X. So what is P? Well, I'll just color this in red because that P is actually equal to um, this term here plus x or just x. Um, so if we go ahead and substitute, well, first of all, before we do anything else, um, I'm actually going to um, get rid of that w because we're assuming um, a certain solution for y or the first solution, we might call it y1. But we'll just call it y for now. So I've got rid of that w, and I'm, I'm assuming that my solution, my first linear independent solution for y is ce to the minus uh, integral of p d x. So um, <clears throat> we substitute in um, x for p. So we've got ce to the minus integral of x d x and that's fairly standard to integrate um, that is equal to c e to the minus x squared over 2. Now the thing is as I said we're, we're assuming that um, this equation here um, We'll call that equation two. We're assuming that equation two is a solution to equation one, but we don't know for sure if it is. It's not forced to be. Um, so what do we do? Well, we know that in equation one, we've got y double prime, y prime, and y. Well, we already have a solution that we can guess for y that is equation two itself but we need to work out what y prime and y double prime is um, and of course we do that by first of all uh, differentiating uh, our solution y to get let me just um, let's get rid of that uh, right, uh, y prime <coughs> is equal to uh, minus c x e. Whoops, I'm just getting used to my new stylus, so please do bear with me. E to the minus x squared over 2. So we'll call that equation three. 
Uh, we also need a y double prime term. That's our second derivative term, y double prime. And if we differentiate uh, this product here, um, then we get, um, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that red stripey thing there. And we find that we have minus c e to the minus x squared over 2. Make that two look a little more convincing. I hope you can see that that is a 2. Um, and we've got an additional bit because we're differentiating a product, which is cx squared e to the minus x squared over 2. And by the way, I do make the most horrendous mistakes with plus and minus signs, so you must watch me. Um, uh, I do uh, tend to get a little confused sometimes and don't always notice the mistakes that I make. So what we can do is now, we've got equation one at the top and we've got these three equations here, two, three, and four. And we can substitute each of equations, two, three, and four, in for y double prime, y prime, and y in equation one. So um, I'm just going to write that out. Um, I'll use um, I'll use green. I think for this, let's use a, a nice green color. Uh, right. Uh, if I can get this right, okay. So we've got minus c e to the minus x squared over two uh, plus c x squared e to the minus x squared over, oops, dear me, let's just get rid of that, right, there we are, my style is doing weird things, let's just go back to that, so where were we? So, um, there we are, over 2, and let's smooth that up a little bit. And the next term is a negative term, uh, so that's the y prime bit. Um, so it's a negative term multiplied by the plus x. So what we get is minus cx squared e to the minus x squared over 2. Uh, that is our y prime term. And of course, we then have to add on this y term underlined in red, which is um, c e to the minus x squared over 2. So I'll just write this down here because we're running out of space. Base C E to the minus X squared over 2. And let's check that we've got everything right there. What's that equal to? C, there we are. Uh, all the minus signs are there, as they should be. So, uh, right. Let's just change to red. Okie doke. So, you'll notice that the first term here is the negative of the last term and the um the second term is well we can say it's a negative of the third term so in actual fact um let me just uh start again uh, again with that um this cancels with this and this whoops cancels with this and of course, we see, let's just change to red again, that is, uh, let me change to green, I think green is a bit better for this. 
is equal to zero. So uh, this implies that y equals c e to the minus x squared over two is one linearly independent solution. right solution like that. So we know that that uh, is a solution, but it's only one of them, and we need to find the second solution, and this is where uh, the next part of the wrong scheme comes in. So uh, the wrong scheme, as I said at the beginning, can be expressed as a determinant and I'll just write that out. Um, the determinant at, of the Ronskian is y1, this is our first solution which in our case will be this term underlined in red. Uh, there will be another solution which we as yet don't know y2 and that's what we have to find out um, and of course here we've got y1 prime. So that is the derivative of this term underlined in red and then of course we have y2 prime. And so we know what y1 is. It's um, c e to the minus x squared over 2. I hope you can again read what I'm doing uh, reasonably okay. I know it's a little bit scrawly. Uh, we've got y2 here and so what's y1 prime? Well y1 prime, we actually already worked this out um, before uh, but we've got c e, uh, let me see, mistake, mistake, mistake alert. There we are. So we've got c x e to the minus x squared over 2 and y2, oop, that's a bit big, but never mind, we'll fit it in. y2 prime is just y2 prime because we don't know what it is. And of course, um, if you remember, um, I said that the Ronskian is kind of equal to this here. We've got to use the Ronskian to find our first solution, but we'll rewrite um, that part of the Ronskian as W equals, um, I'm going to call this C, uh, let me see, what should we call it? C to E to the minus t c x but we know what t is it's x let me just make that more clear uh, i will get used to uh, uh, writing with this stylus please do forgive me so that's equal to c2 um, e to minus x squared over 2. So um, normally um, this uh, C2 uh, is C2 is just a constant and normally most people refer to it as only uh, W sub 0 or something like that. It, it doesn't really matter what you call it. So anyway, we've got a Ronsky in there. We've got two W's, uh, or we've got the same W, but in two different forms. Uh, we have to find the determinant of, uh, whoop, let me just erase that, right? So uh, we just 
scroller a little bit. Right, so we have to find the determinant of this here with the red dot next to it, and we have to equate it to this term here with the red dot after that. Um, so how do we find the determinant of this Ronskian? Well, um, it's hopefully not too difficult because um, to find the determinant uh, of this, you just simply multiply that by that. And let's find a different color, purple. Looks very nice. So minus that times that. So um, we find that we have something to the tune of, uh, let's just change stylus again. Uh, so really what we have is the Ronskian is equal to um, C uh, E to the minus, whoops, let's undo that, there we are. C e to the minus x squared over 2, uh, y 2 dash, uh, when I say dash I mean y 2 prime, uh, so we've got C e to the minus x squared over 2 times y prime, and then minus the bits in purple multiplied together, uh, so that we get uh, plus C E C E oh mistake mistake alert there we are C X E to the minus X squared over two uh, and we have the y2 there, if you remember, um, that in green multiplied together minus that in purple multiplied together. So that gives us uh, this bit here. And because uh, I haven't really left enough room on this, um, but that, uh, I'll just get rid of that squiggly line because it might be a bit confusing, is equal to. Um, C uh, 2 um, E oops a daisy let's just erase that C 2 oop not doing very well here am I right C 2 E the minus X squared over now, can you see what we might be able to do with this equation here? Well, we've got, um, I use this purple, we've got this side of the equation equal to this side of the equation. So we've got two parts of the equation. Uh, we can actually just forget about the W there because... Um, we just got this equals this, so we can tidy it up. And uh, if we simplify it, we get y2 uh, prime plus x y2 equal to c2 over c1. Now, Actually, in my notes, um, we'll just undo that. I've referred to my constant as C here. Um, I sometimes, uh, as I said, I do get a little bit uh, confused um, about uh, factors that I'm using, but I have referred to uh, C up here in the first linearly independent solution. So I think really, uh, by rights, we, we should stick with that. Uh, the, at least. I have actually referred to the constant in the Ronskian as being C2. So we're okay, we're good to go. Um, so 
in my notes, I, I've actually referred to this as C1. Um, it doesn't really matter what what you call it. Um, but in actual fact, I, I'm going to simplify this a bit more. Um, uh, so it turns out that you can just put that equals um, uh, to, we could just call that C3. I call it C3 because that's what I actually got in my notes. And I don't want to get um, confused and I don't want to confuse you. So we'll just um, write that out um, in more kind of um, uh, Leibnizian notation. I think it was Leibniz um, who, uh, let me just see, it was Leibniz who tended to write his derivatives in this form, not Newton. Uh, New, uh, Newton's um, notation is the y2 prime sort of affair and I think I'm right in believing, uh, don't write in if I am wrong of course, uh, you can find this out for yourself but I think Leibniz invented the dy by dx. Um, so we've got plus x y2, oops missed the two there, there we are, equal to C3. Right, now we have got a uh, another differential equation and one that you may be more familiar with. Let me just go right back up there. I'm sort of jumping around on the page here. Many apologies for that. So how do we solve this? Well, you obtain this equation by, or at least you obtain solution to it, by um, deducing an integrating factor. So the integrating factor, it's a bit like using the Ronsky method really, is obtained by finding the exponential of the positive integral this time, not the negative integral of um, x d x. So here, uh, let me just, I'll outline that in green, a little bit simpler. This x term is what we substitute here in the integrating factor. If that had been plus x squared, then in the integrating factor, we would have had an x squared. If it had been an, uh, the root of x, um, for example, um, you would have had a square root of x in the integrating factor, or at least in the indicial part of it. If that had been a tan, tangent or a sine, curve, again, it would have been similarly written there as well. Uh, so um, this turns out to be e to the, ooh, I better not put a minus sign there, e to the x squared, but e to the plus x squared over two. That's our integrating factor. So we write it as such. We multiply the above equation. In fact, shall I give it a name? We've got equation for, uh, we'll call this equation five. So we multiply equation five by the integrating factor. And I do prefer to write um, my equations out when I can um, in, in the form of Leibniz's notation. Uh, uh, because you do need to kind of factor out the, uh, the differential. So we've got plus x e to the x squared over 2. And we're over halfway there now to finding the second part of the solution. That's meant to be a 2. Let me make it a little bit more convincing once again. It really needs to be, um, whoops, that's a, oh, uh, eraser, right, two equals, uh, what have we got up here, well we've got a C3, C3, 
three e to the x squared over two. And hopefully you should be able to solve this very easily um, <clears throat> because this, um, I'll just outline it, um, let's outline, well, outline it, it. this is just um, the result of differentiating the product, um, and I'll write it out here, d by d x of uh, y2 e to the x squared, and I have to remind myself that it's not a minus x squared, it's a plus x squared, because we've got um, if I can just throw it up, we've got plus x squared uh, over 2 is there, and this is equal to c3 e to the x squared over 2. Uh, so now, um, well, it's certainly very easy to integrate the left hand side, but that just leaves y2. I tell you what, let's just move, I want to give myself a little bit more space, so that leaves y2 e to the x squared over 2, and that is equal, I will get used to using this stylus, so that's equal to the interval of c3, I'm taking the c3 outside the interval, fine, uh, the interval of e to the x squared over 2. And we don't want to forget the dx, because we're integrating with respect to x. And I'll add on, I'm actually going to call this, well, you can call it anything you want. Uh, let me call it c4. I wanted to call it C1, actually, because it just consistency, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so we can simplify this above result. Uh, we'll, uh, I suppose you could call this equation 6, but I probably haven't got quite enough room. Uh, so if we um, divide both sides by e to the x squared over 2, we get C3 e to the minus x squared, it's uh, very fiddly getting these, I'll just click on that, x squared over 2, c3 e to the minus x squared over 2 times the integral of e to the plus x squared over 2, um, the x plus c4. Um, does that really look like a good writing? Uh, let's just have another go at doing that. c4 e to the, I think it's a minus x squared over. Two. Right, okay, so we've actually got the second solution. Um, I'm leaving it like that because um, uh, this term here is not really possible to integrate in terms of elementary functions. Um, it's basically, a, I think, a complementary error function. Uh, and you can look into that yourselves and see what you get. You can graph it. Um, you can express this as an infinite series. Um, I said at the beginning, you can solve these types of equations using series and so on and so forth. Well, in this case, this is kind of an analytic solution. But even so, even at this stage, you would kind of have to approximate this integral of e to the x squared over 2 dx term. Um, but I'm not going to do that here um, because we're not, we're not actually going into the analysis. 
of um, what that equation does. Uh, but what we do know is that we've also got a y1 term. I'm just writing it down here again. And that's CE to the minus x squared over 2, I hope. Um, and that is correct. Uh, so the general solution is y equal to y1 plus y2. OK, um, so um, we simply add y2 here. Let me outline that in red. So we simply add this um, solution to this solution. But you will notice that, as happens to be the case in these kind of equations, uh, this term, let's change to a different color. Uh, this term here in this solution is very, very similar to that. The only difference being that the constants are different. So it turns out that when you add y2 to y1 or y1 to y2, this term in purple here, when added to this term in purple here, here, do beg my French, um, just simply becomes basically the same term, if you like, y equals uh, e to the minus, whoops, oh, actually, we can leave that as it is, minus x squared over 2, but with a different constant, where a, let me just, uh, well, I complete the um, I complete the solution, so we've got plus b. I'm just changing the constant in solution two. That's the solution for y two. I'm just changing uh, this c three term to um, the letter b. So we've got B. I'm having to sort of scroll up and down here. So we've got E to the minus X. Let's just uh, erase that and do a little bit of a better job. Let's get the right pen. Minus X. squared over 2. Really not doing brilliantly great here, am I? Seem to keep having to. All right. Right, there we are. Times the integral of uh, e to the x squared over 2 dx. E to the x squared over 2. And let's try and do this without getting anything wrong, We're not making any mistakes. So here we have a final solution, a complete analytic solution, if you want, albeit a bit of an approximation. Uh, if you work out the, the integral of e to the x squared over 2, where a is equal to, and I think we've got c plus c4. a is equal to c plus c4. And it, it really doesn't matter what you call these things. And b is just equal to, did we have c3 there? Yeah. I'm just, just redefining as something else. And so uh, we've got our full uh, general solution to the original ordinary differential equation 
1. So the solution to equation 1 is that. Uh, so I hope that has been helpful to you and that you will tune in next time for my next um, presentation. So until then, uh, take care and I look forward to seeing you then. Okay, bye.